In episode 9, Jen awakes next to Steve in her bed and immediately regrets what she did. She shimmies onto the bathroom, and when she comes out of the shower, she tries to end things with Ben. But he doesn't understand. And Jen is simply freaked out with the fact that she just slept with a guy that looks identical to the person she killed. And even though Ben makes a really good plea, Jen tells him you gotta get out. And as soon as he leaves, Jen starts crying. When Ben makes the walk of shame, he runs into Charlie and immediately makes an excuse about how he needed to meet his mom there for an early meeting. But as he's leaving, it's pretty obvious that he's sad and upset, and he tells Charlie, hey, take care of your mom, and then he walks out. That same morning, Judy heads to prison because she's visiting her mom, who's an inmate. And this is the first time in 15 years that she's even seeing her mother. But it was a simple miscommunication, because while Judy was sending her mom letters, her mom was sending letters back, but Judy wasn't getting them. And because Judy wasn't responding, her mom didn't feel it necessary to call her because she didn't think that Judy wanted to be in her life anymore. And because of what happened with Flo, Judy is heading there to make amends with her mom. And her mom, even though she's in prison, is the happiest she's been in a while because she's clean and sober and comfortable. So the two catch up, and Judy asks her mom how she ended up in prison, but her mom says, I can't really talk about it. But it's the system. Because once you come in here, you just keep coming back and back and back. Judy then apologizes for ratting her mom out on the stand when she was a kid but her mom says don't worry about it It was a long time ago and I should have never let you take the stand anyway you were a kid you didn't know what you were doing but Judy lets her know I think about it every day and I'm regretful for it so after Judy leaves the prison she goes over to talk to Detective Perez and she's brought a peace offering of a picture she drew of Flo for Detective Perez but the real reason she's shown up is because she wants to know if Detective Perez has any idea where her paintings are from TKG Arts. But Detective Perez calls Nick over, and they want to know if Judy knows anything about what Parker showed Nick, which were the pictures that Parker took off Instagram that clearly show Charlie, Parker, Steve's car, and Steve's hat. Judy immediately says it's not what it looks like, but she's having a lot of trouble explaining it. And Detective Perez and Nick want the truth because the police chief is giving them pressure to make an arrest, and he's pointing them in the direction of Judy. But all the evidence right now is pointing to Charlie, and they'd have motive and they clearly have evidence but judy reassures him that charlie had nothing to do with this although she's not saying anything else so judy immediately heads over to jen's place and jen has had quite a day she started off the morning learning that her stop sign petition got rejected by the city council so she decided to get the rejection in person she's headed over to the city council meeting and wants to know why they rejected her stop sign but the real reason they rejected it is because one of the people on the city council is the guy who didn't know the meaning of no when jen was trying to find the car and after jen brings up safety he has the audacity to actually say it's amazing to me you're bringing up safety when you assaulted me not too long ago. But this is Jen Harding we're talking about, so she puts the guy on blast in a hashtag MeToo moment, letting the entire courtroom know exactly what he did. She also makes mention that maybe if there was a stop sign in the road where her husband was killed, he would still be there today. And then she just drops the mic and walks off stage. And then when she got home, Henry's upset because Shandy told Henry that she's the one who killed his bird. She also told Henry that Jen told her to lie about it. And now Henry feels betrayed by the both of them. And the only person he really wants to talk to and see right now is Judy, but she's not there. And as Jen is leaving Henry's room, she runs into Charlie who wants some answers. But Jen tells him that Steve was mixed up with some really bad people and basically shut up and don't worry about it. Now Charlie is holding that little toiletry bag that he took from Steve's car and when Jen asks, hey, what is that? He says, oh, never mind, it's nothing. So when Judy finally shows up at Jen's house, Jen is very stressed out. And Judy lets her know that the cops have pictures of Charlie driving around Laguna with Steve's car and the Instagram photos, and they think that Charlie's the one who killed Steve. But she's going to take the fall. And Jen says, you can't do that. But she says, I'm not asking, I'm telling you I'm taking the fall. And Judy feels like she has to do this because the night that Steve died, Judy was going to commit suicide. And then she got Jen's phone call. And she feels like she was saved that night to repay the debt. And Jen finally comes clean that you're not the reason why Steve is dead. I killed him. She goes on to explain the reason why she murdered Steve. And one of those nasty comments that we hadn't heard before was Ted wanted out of the relationship so bad that he jumped in front of their car. And that's something that Jen has kind of always felt was true, was that she alienated her husband so badly that he actually jumped in front of a car. She starts bawling her eyes out saying that her husband hated her and her kids hate her and she's just a piece of shit. Now, right after hearing that Jen was the one who murdered Steve, Judy started crying. But then after hearing Jen go on with the story, she feels the need to console Jen. And as Jen is saying how everybody hates her, Judy says, well, I never hated you. And Jen says, of course you don't. That's because you gravitate to anybody who will give you a little morsel of attention, even if it's abusive attention. That's why you stay with Steve. That's why you love your mom. It's like you get off on it or something. You'll just stick around for anybody. And as soon as those words come out of her mouth, she knows that she made a mistake. Judy tries to get out of there, but Jen is saying, no, stop. I'm sorry. Just hit me. Punch me in the face. And as she's begging to get punched, Judy says, I'm not going to do that. I'm not like you. So Jen then tries to block the car from leaving. But finally, Judy screams at the top of her lungs, stop it. Just stop it. And she starts hysterically crying. Jen goes to console her and takes her inside and puts her to bed. And then she writes a letter to Charlie, Judy, and Henry. Puts the bird that she killed Steve with in the safe along with the gun. Takes out a binder. Puts all the letters in a binder. And then heads over to Detective Perez's house to turn herself in. 
Thanks so much for checking out this recap. If you don't see the next video there, don't worry. It'll be up in a day or two or as quickly as I can get to it. Please consider subscribing to this channel. It would really help me out. And then uh, like the video if you liked it and hit thumbs down if you don't.